What's going on guys? So today we're going to be putting together the ultimate streaming solution. It's very exciting. It's going to be a dual system inside of a single chassis. But before I get into the actual parts, which you can kind of see behind me, I wanted to quickly talk about three main streaming solutions that most people use these days. The first solution being a single system that handles everything. The main benefits to going this route include lower upfront costs than the other two options we'll mention. And it's fairly straightforward, especially for first time builders or beginners, because you literally only have one rig to worry about building and maintaining. The main downside here is that you're going to be sacrificing quite a bit of performance because your CPU, your GPU, your memory, all of that is going to be handling two very intensive workloads at once. Having to allocate that many system resources to multiple tasks simultaneously is bound to lead to things like interference, lag, FPS drops, and other nasty things that just aren't ideal for the player or the viewers on the stream. The solution also goes against the old adage of don't put all your eggs in one basket because if that system goes down or crashes for whatever reason, it's not just your game that dies, your stream goes along with it. The worst part is that you won't even be able to see all the Fs in chat because your system will be f That brings us to our second solution, which is having two separate systems, one to handle gaming and the other for streaming. This eliminates our performance problems since the systems won't be bogging each other down, they won't have to split resources, and they'll be operating effectively at 100% in each of the respective tasks. An obvious con to this setup is that you essentially have to buy two sets of hardware, which is going to be a lot more expensive than solution number one. The other main downer is that you now have two towers to worry about, so that's going to significantly cut into your desk space, or God forbid you put them on the floor, which don't do that, and also all the cable clutter that comes along with it. Unless, of course, you have something like a KVM switch or a piece of software, which is what we'll be using, that allows you to use a single set of peripherals between both systems. That brings us to solution number three, which is what we're going to be focusing on and building today, which is a dual system inside of a single chassis using a single power supply. This is, of course, more expensive than solution number one, but it's potentially quite a bit cheaper than solution number two because we're using the same case and PSU for both systems. That's two components that you don't have to worry about that you did in solution number two. This also gives you the physical physical benefits of having a single system, so you're not taking up as much desk space and your cable management is a whole lot tidier. Now obviously for this project we need a special case and power supply that's tailor made for a build just like this. So let's talk about those two things first and then we'll dive into the rest of the hardware. Starting with the chassis. This is the Fantex Lux 2 baby. It is a full tower case, it supports up to SSI EEB motherboards which is probably a larger form factor than most people would ever need, but there's also an additional mount for a mini ITX board so you can do a dual system. This is one one of several dual system chassis from Fantex. They also have their Enthu Elite, Enthu Mini XL, Eclipse P400S, and Evolve X. The Lux 2 that we're working with today is actually one of their more spacious dual system chassis, so it has a lot more hardware support and just a ridiculous amount of flexibility. The power supply is also from Fantex. This is the Revolt X 1200 watt 80 plus platinum fully modular unit. It has two sets of cables for up to two systems. It can be used as a single power supply, like a regular power supply for a single system as well, if you wanted to upgrade to a dual system down the line. And it's actually based on a Seasonic power supply, which is a very reputable brand for PSUs. So again, our power supply and our case will be shared between both of our systems today. Everything else is unique to their respective builds. Now I'm gonna call off parts for the gaming PC first, but I wanted to quickly point out that you'll notice that we're using a Ryzen 9 3900X for our gaming system and an Intel Core i9-9900K for our streaming system. In a perfect world, I would have swapped these. I would have done a role reversal and had our 12 core 24 thread Ryzen chip be the streaming PC because of all the multi-threaded performance that it offers and have the Core i9 be the gaming chip because it's the faster of the two in gaming. But alas, I could do no such thing because our streaming build is gonna be on a mini ITX motherboard which only has a single PCIe by 16 slot which is gonna be occupied by our capture card, which means whatever CPU we use here has to have integrated graphics since we have no room for a discrete GPU. And since the 3900X doesn't have integrated graphics, we have to go with the one that does, which is the 9900K. Having said that, I'm not worried at all. I think both CPUs are gonna be perfectly adequate for what they're doing because again, they're able to leverage one 100% of the resources for their respective tasks. But moving on, let's go over the parts for our gaming system. Again, we have the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core 24 thread CPU. We're pairing that with an ASRock X570 Tai Chi motherboard, 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z Neo RGB DDR4 at 3600 speed. Now, typically I recommend 16 gigs for a gaming PC because it's more than adequate for most users. But in this case, I have a feeling that this would actually make a really good system for editing as well. Because a lot of Twitch streamers like to edit their stream 
streams, turn them into highlight reels and upload them to YouTube and things like that. So I could easily see someone having this setup, record their streams, and then taking that raw file, dumping it onto the gaming system, and then begin editing it with the 3900X. And in that case, having 32 gigs of onboard memory will not go unused. For storage, I'm using a Samsung 960 Pro NVMe M.2 2 terabyte SSD. I would have liked to use a PCIe Gen 4 drive here just to leverage that connectivity and those speeds uh, on our X570 platform. But because I'm lazy and I don't know exactly where all my PCIe Gen 4 drives are right now, this one will have to do. Cooling our 3900X and hiding behind the other boxes here, we have an Asus ROG Ryogen 360 liquid cooled AIO. And because I don't know where the included Noctua fans are, I'm gonna be using these PC cooler Corona RGB fans instead. Despite the super cheap price, these are actually really good performers in both airflow and static pressure dependent environments. So happy to be using those as well. And I think that, oh no, of course, obviously the GPU. We have a Gigabyte Aorus Extreme RTX 2080 Ti. Oh yeah, of course, why, why skimp on the GPU for a gaming system like this? Moving on to our streaming PC again, we have the Intel Core i9 9900K with eight cores and 16 threads on board. We're gonna be pairing that with an Asus ROG Strix Z390i gaming motherboard, 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 at 3000 speed. Cooling our CPU is the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240P Mirage. We also have a Samsung 970 Evo Plus NVMe M.2 drive at 500 gigs. And last but not least, we have our Elgato 4K 60 Pro capture card. Now, as far as peripherals go, we're gonna have two monitors, one that's gonna be hooked up to the gaming PC, the other to the streaming PC, and one keyboard, one mouse, and one headset that we're gonna use to interface between both systems. Instead of using a KVM switch that'll add additional cost to this already pretty pricey build, we're gonna be using a software called ShareMouse that allows us to use one set of peripherals between both systems. It's a free software, there is a paid version, but I'm told there's quite a few generous features in the free version, so hopefully that'll get us through it. I'll be sure to explain exactly how it all works with our setup though once we get to that point. Speaking of which, we are ready to build this thing. Oh yeah, links below if, you, if you're curious at all, links and stuff, they're affiliate links, so I will get a small kickback if you happen to use any of those. Feel free though, but we are ready to build. I'm gonna do a really quick and dirty montage here. It's probably just gonna be a single camera angle or something really simple so that we can move on because there's a lot more to talk about and show off once the system's all built. And the build is complete. It's looking pretty good, very beastly. Um, you might have noticed that the memory changed on the streaming PC, that's because the system was acting up uh, initially, so I did some memory troubleshooting. It turned out to just be a BIOS update that was needed, but I like the way this kit looks better. Uh, so I left it in there, it's still 16 gigs. Uh, I think it's actually a little bit faster at 3200 speed. I did find those Noctua fans that belong to our Ryogen cooler. I only found two of them though, so I put one down here, and one up top at the intake, especially since these two fans will be bringing in slightly warmer air due to the radiator that it has to, that the air has to pass through first. We also have another 140 millimeter fan back there. I think that's like a stock NZXT case fan that I threw back there. But apart from that, you can see we were able to get all the hardware in, no problem. Uh, didn't even feel cramped at all. You would think for building two systems into one chassis that things would start to feel a little claustrophobic, but not in the Lux too. And all things considered, like this isn't a huge, huge tower. Like it's definitely on the larger side, bigger than average, but look at this profile. The actual width of the case is not that wide, especially compared to other dual system chassis on the market. So uh, it's just a testament to the efficient use of space inside of this particular case. You can see I mounted the GPU vertically because it's got those cool lights that uh, I sort of wanted to show off. Now the case does already have these uh, three slots that are vertical right here for system one. However, that brings the car just a little too close to the tempered glass side panel for my liking. So I use the included vertical GPU bracket. So with that accessory, it does bring the card a bit deeper into the case so it can breathe a bit more easily. By the way, if the system sounds a little noisy right now, that's mainly from this GPU because I'm actually running the system under load, I think in Unigen Heaven 4.0, um, because I wanted to see the fan spin up. Otherwise it would just be at zero RPM and look kind of boring. Definitely gets a lot quieter when you pop that guy on. You can still hear it, but 
not bad. So I think we're pretty much ready to get this all connected. Give me a moment and we'll be right back. Okay, here it is, the final setup, looking pretty good. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I got this all up and running. Uh, let's start off with the back of the system. Starting with our gaming system, I've got one keyboard, one mouse, and one ethernet cable connected. And if you go down to our graphics card, you can see that I actually have one display port cable that's connected to our gaming monitor, more on that in just a moment. And then we have an HDMI, this is a high speed HDMI cable that came included with our capture card, coming out of the HDMI out of our GPU and going into the HDMI in port of our Elgato 4K 60 Pro card. The high-speed HDMI cable isn't necessary unless you're trying to target a certain refresh rate and resolution. And in this case, we're gaming at 2560 by 1440 at 144 hertz. For the gaming system, we have one display port cable that's connected to our second companion monitor for all of our streaming settings, Twitch, Twitch chat, and that sort of thing. An ethernet cable, that's important for a streaming system. And we also have our webcam and microphone. Our webcam is the C922 from Logitech, and our microphone is the audio -Tech Technica AT2020 condenser mic. I already know what some of you guys are thinking. Wow, you spent several thousand dollars on this ultimate streaming system and couldn't afford to get a better camera. No, that's because this isn't really the focus of the video, guys. I'm really just showing this. These are just accessories to help me demonstrate exactly how the system works. So that's the back of the system. It's pretty hairy. You definitely have to be mindful of cable management, unlike me. Then let's move around to this side. So really quick word about our monitors. This is our gaming display. It's the MSI <laughs> Optics Mag 271CQR. 27 inch with FreeSync, FreeSync 2, I believe. 2560 by 1440, 144 Hertz, and I think a one millisecond response time. The great thing is that even though we'll be streaming at 1080p 60 FPS, we'll be able to game at 1440p 144 Hertz, thanks to our 4K 60 Pro capture card. Now there are quite a few steps involved in getting this working, and it can be kind of confusing if you don't know exactly what you're doing. So to that end, huge shout out to Epis Vox for making an awesome tutorial on how to get the 4K 60 Pro working with 1440p 144 hertz. I'll put a link to that video in the description if you guys are interested or if you're at that stage in your system uh, setup, go ahead and check that out. It's a great video. So again, we literally only have our game running on this system and thus this monitor. On this monitor, which is uh, again connected to our streaming system, we have our web browser, which currently has Twitch open and then OBS is what we're using to actually stream. You can see me in the webcam, sort of. And you can see we're capturing our gameplay just fine. Now, earlier I mentioned that we'd be using a KVM software called ShareMouse in order to use one keyboard and one mouse to control both systems. The first main requirement to get this working is that both systems have to have ShareMouse installed. And the second requirement is that both of those systems have to be on the same network. If that's all good and gravy, then you should be good to go. And let me show you guys exactly how this works. So it pops up in your tray, there's a little icon here. And if you go to monitor manager, all of your connected monitors will show up. Very similar to like the Windows display settings. And you can configure this so the program knows uh, the orientation of your displays. So this is mine, I'm gonna click okay. And just like that, you can see the mouse cursor goes from one monitor to the next very seamlessly. My mind was kind of blown when I first saw this, but it just works really well. You can even drag files over from one system to another. It's pretty cool. So the software just makes it incredibly easy for me to be gaming over here. And then at a moment's notice, being able to switch over to the streaming system, uh, change settings here, respond to chat and things like that. There's a few other cool things you can do with it, but that's more or less how it works in a setup like this. And on that note, we are ready to stream. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start streaming here, fire up our game. And just like that, we are live, streaming like a pro, and it looks really good. I mean, obviously the quality settings can be pumped up on the streaming system because it's not in charge of having to game as well. It only has to focus on that task. And likewise, the uh, the gaming system is completely smooth. You can see that we are, in fact, I put the OSD there, so you know that's 144 hertz. At the end of the day, it's really all about uncompromised performance during the stream. You're not lagging, there's no stutter, there's no interference, no frame drops, and your viewers are happy because everything's looking super smooth and crispy on their end. But yeah. Ah, that's pretty much how it all comes together, guys. It's actually been a while since I've streamed with two systems and I've completely forgotten what a game changer it is. Obviously, your wallet may not be able to handle something like this. This is not a build that everyone needs after all, but if you're serious about streaming, it does not get much better than this. If you have a setup similar to this, you, my friend, have arrived. And I myself have arrived at the end of this video. So thanks again to Fantex for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you for watching it. Again, links to all this stuff in the description below in case you're interested. Toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, and I will see you guys in the next video.